What do you reckon? This is a, a new teaching space. Students have started back. We've got a bit of an echo. It's a newly painted room. The idea of this room is that students can come and study in here and it's not a lab. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's not a lab, which means I can bring in my, uh, my cup of tea. Also, there's lots of shelves and lots of surface, which makes my life easier. This is gonna fill up with models and stuff. It's very echoey, because we haven't got any blinds yet. Um, but it's a teaching space, study space. I don't know, I think it needs a bit more colour. I think it needs uh, either a shade or maybe we get some posters up here. Maybe we'll just wear a colourful shirt, that'll do it. Anyway, uh, we'll see how we go. This week's topic is, we're going back to the lungs and I'm gonna cover something um, because this is something I, I find, I'm, I'm quite surprised that students tend to struggle with and it's the shape, just the shape of the lung. They don't recognise the different shape of the lung posteriorly and anteriorly and that sort of thing. So that's all we're going to talk about. So you might also take the, uh, the shape of the lung for granted. Um, see if you do as we go through the video or go and watch something else. Um, all right, if we start off at the base, the diaphragm is underneath, is inferior to the lung, and the diaphragm has this, this dome shape when relaxed, right? And when you, when you contract your diaphragm, it flattens, the volume within the thorax increases and you draw air in. Which means that the base of each lung, this is the left lung, is very concave. And see how we're getting this feathered narrow edge around here? And if we look at the other lung, the right lung, again, it's very, very concave. This is the diaphragmatic surface next to the diaphragm on either side. Let's have a look at the, the shape of the thorax itself. So you can see, there's the diaphragm there. You can see how my, that, oh, See, it's very, very dome-shaped diaphragm. And the lungs within the thorax are trying to fill all the space that's available to them. Um, and look, the, the vertebrae are in the middle here. And see how the descending thoracic aorta is, is right next to the vertebrae. It's a little bit anterior, a little bit to the left, but it's taking up some space within the thorax, which means the lung is gonna have to go around it to take up the space. So I put the heart back in. Right. So the heart's filling up the middle space, but the lung is gonna take up as much space around it as it can. But look, around here, we've got this lovely, lovely deep curved space, right? Um, and of course we've got all these ribs, which means that when you look at the lung, of course this isn't great because it's a partial lung, when you, when you look at a lung, it has this nice rounded posterior part to it. And it's usually, well when we take the, the lungs out of a cadaver anyway, because they're, they're fixed and they're a bit rigid, when you take them out, We've got these, um, these impressions left by the ribs here. But that's the posterior part of the lung. It's this rounded shape that's filling this deep impression formed by the vertebrae and the ribs, all right? Um, now, laterally, that curve continues. And if we look at the, the lung on the left side, we'd expect to find an impression left by the descending aorta. And that's what we see here. So that is very much a left lung feature, right? This aorta coming around here. Look, it's just posterior to so the hilum of the lung there. While we're looking around here, so if, if, if this is the costal surface here and this is the diaphragmatic surface here, this medial part of each lung is the mediastinal surface because of course the, the heart's in the middle within the, within the mediastinum or the mediastinum, so the lungs are pressed up against it. So this is the mediastinal surface. And look at how the mediastinal surface is also concave because the heart, is filling it and is taking up the space in here. So the heart is pushing more into the left lung than it does 
into the right lung, but the right lung is similarly concave because the heart is still there. There's the hilum of the lung, there's all the tubes going in and out, but this, this mediastinal surface or mediastinal surface is curved inwards, right? Which leaves the anterior part of the lung, well, and the apex as well. Uh, and the anterior part of the lung then, what's trying to, what it's trying to do is, the lung is mostly filling the space in here, but it's trying to make use of as much space as it can within the, within the thorax. You, you can imagine that as the lungs are developing and as they fill with air, they're just gonna fill the whole of the thorax because that's how it all works. We've already talked about that in the past. But what happens then is that as the, the lungs are filling that space, they get very, very thin anteriorly, right? So they're, they're thick and rounded posteriorly and then anteriorly, they're very thin and feathered because they're kind of stuck between the heart and the thoracic cage, right? That's the same for, for both sides. And in fact, the same thing is happening at the diaphragmatic surface. Look, this is a very thin feathered edge around here and around here. This is lateral, right? Uh, inferior diaphragmatic surface, anterior. So this is what gives us these, these, these very narrow, very feathered bits of lungs here. And when we talk about pleura, and pleural recesses and what have you. That's the lung filling the sharp spaces formed in bits like this, where the diaphragm curves and meets the thoracic cage and all that sort of stuff. Okay, the other thing, as I said, that we haven't talked about is the apex. Each lung's apex actually extends superior to the first rib. Here's the clavicle, there's the first rib, and the apex is up here. If we look at this one, can you see? There's the apex of the lung there, there's the apex of the lung, there's the first rib clavicles coming over here, right? And there's the apex. Do you see? So the, um, the apex of the lung is sticking up, I'm sure we've said this before, is actually extending quite high and up into the into the into the neck. So this is this is very much an anatomical three-dimensional thing that I'm trying to help with. So what happens is I give students a lung, a single lung, and they struggle to work out whether it's left or right. If I have a, a single lung, I think it's very easy. Um, they tend to look at the, the fissures, you know, and the number of lobes. So three lobes on the right, two lobes on the left. And that generally serves them well, but I think it's important to have an idea of this three-dimensional shape of the lung so that when you're visualizing it inside your patient's thorax you've got a better understanding of where everything is look the bulk of the lung this wide part of the lung is very much posterior this anterior part of the lung is actually very 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 thin around here right and this is the the upper lobe middle lobe and lower lobe um, so in fact this this posterior part this this lower lobe is a huge great big thick mass and you've got to work all that out when you look at a chest x-ray and you're seeing bits and bobs on there we're not just thinking about the lobes but think about these shapes okay so pointy at the top of the apex generally concave diaphragmatic aspect and then a curving costal as aspect the mediastinal aspect is also concave uh, and then they are most simply broad posteriorly and thin and feathered anteriorly all right and then you grab either lung so if you've got a lung you can easily work out that's superior there's the rounded bit that's posterior there's the feathered bit that's anterior and there's the diaphragmatic bit so that's inferior there's the hilum all that sort of stuff right really 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 straightforward stuff but it's important stuff is that shape i want you to have in your head anatomy is very much about shapes it's very three-dimensional I'm pretty sure I don't get it all across in a 2D video like this, but this is only part of your studies, right? Okay, short and sweet. That makes a change, doesn't it? It'll take me long to pack up, probably. See you next week. I wonder what we can do to get a bit more colour in here. Does it need dampening? Let me get the blinds in. Yeah, what can we do? What can we do?